be great. Thank you. Um, when to start with then, we thought there were enough injuries in the back line, but uh, the flanker position seems to have been added uh, to that. Um, talk us through the selection in the back row. Yeah, it was, um, it's, it's been a couple of days trying to put it together, to be honest. Um, yeah, well, obviously injuries of, of any description are, are not pleasant for players and no one wants, uh, wants injuries, but it's part and parcel of the game, first and foremost. And obviously the, the most disappointing is probably young Josh McLeod, who uh, missed the last squad through uh, being injured in a club game the day before coming in. And then uh, yesterday to be named in front of his peers and, and um, have them celebrate and uh, give him a pat on the back and then to go out training half an hour later to be um, stretched off was was not not great for him, not great for any of us. So uh, really, really sad and disappointed for Josh. At first and foremost, you know, a debut against uh, Scotland would have been um, something he's dreamt of. So, yeah, we're very disappointed about that. And of course... Um, yeah, with Lids and and uh, and Josh taking a bump to his, uh, getting his uh, neck treatment, you know we've got um, three quality players here unavailable uh, who can play in that in that position. So yeah, we've gone obviously with Aaron there. We've got an experienced player. Um, he comes uh, comes in from the bench. He would have been on the bench, so he's starting. And young um, James Botham uh, goes straight onto the bench. So an exciting time for him. So what is the injury to Josh McLeod, and how serious is it? Yeah, he uh, ruptured his Achilles tendon in the, in the training session. What does that mean? Um, looking at the back line... Yeah, it's, it's probably, sorry, it's probably better. I'm guessing okay. somewhere in the vicinity of about six months. Uh, looking at the uh, back line, uh, you've had to make a, a lot of changes there. How satisfied are you with what you've got now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot of time in the medical room, I can assure you. Um, yeah, look, we, we were really happy with um, how the midfield got on on the weekend and uh, disappointed that, um, you know, two of them won't be there this week, obviously. Um, they were forming a powerful uh, combination in training. And uh, so, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's another opportunity for Owen Watkin uh, at 13 and, and uh, Nick, who obviously came on and played pretty well at 12, will, will resume that, uh, that position. And uh, Willis Hallahollow will get an opportunity off the bench. So um, an exciting time for him. Yeah, what uh, qualities does Willis Hallahollow uh, bring to the uh, the squad? And uh, what would you say to those who uh, are not maybe happy about residency qualifications for Wales? In general, oh, that is. Yeah, I think Hadley Park scored two tries on debut and everyone was pretty excited about his eligibility. And um, but Willis has got a fantastic feet. He's most defenders beaten. He, meet, he wins most collisions um, out of any of the Welsh players uh, in the midfield. Uh, you know, he's, he's got just something that uh, other players don't have, and that's that uh, ability to, to break the line, um, to beat defenders, um, and, a, and a very exciting skill set, which, uh, you know, hopefully at some stage on the weekend we'll get to see. What about the Scots? They've had to make uh, three changes. Um, how do you assess their qualities at the moment, having uh, shocked England? Yeah, well, look, uh, we've, we've got the uppermost respect uh, for what Greg has done with that side since the World Cup. He's... Um, uh, got a side there that's full of confidence. Uh, clearly, we know that from the autumn series um, where we came second, uh, and the the game on the weekend it was a thorough, thoroughly deserved win. And uh, you know they're defending well, um, they're holding on to the ball for long periods, so they're going to be a pretty tough nut to crack. And obviously, uh, going to uh, up to Edinburgh and in the cold weather, which we're going to have by the looks, um, it's going to be a big challenge, obviously. And in terms of uh, the training turnaround, obviously with the changes and the uh, six days between the game, how confident can you be that uh, you will be uh, fully 100% come kick-off as a, as a unit? Yeah, look, it's, it, you know, we knew when the draw came out, we, it was a tough start in terms of having to play Ireland and then um, turning around in six days and having the travel uh, thrown in, which we've never done before. So, you know, we've looked at that and when we travel and... Um, and what we do this week, and obviously we changed our training week after the, the, um, the physicality of, of the weekend's match. So, you know, we'll have our first proper training run today, uh, this afternoon. Um, yesterday was more of a run through, um, and we've done a lot of classroom work and, uh, and team meetings. So, uh, obviously we're getting the, uh, the boys right for another big physical encounter. So, um, hence just loading up the back end of the week a little bit. Uh, and giving them the extra recovery day, which uh, which they all needed. So uh, hopefully, you know, we'll we'll make the best of this of this situation. 
Finally, for me, do you expect the, uh, the temperatures to be a factor in how the game plays out? I will certainly be taking um, our, uh, our thermals and making sure that uh, everybody has what they need and, and, and prepare well. So, yeah, it's something that we do discuss and, and we'll, we'll be across. Thank you, Wayne. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Wayne, it's Beth. You all right? Good, thank you, Beth. You, you, you must be wanting to tear your hair out with all these injuries. <laughs> What's left of it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, it happens, doesn't it, from time to time, and uh, you've just got to um, box on. You can't dwell on it. It's, it's you know, and, and coaches will all say it that it's uh, one man's misfortune is another. It's an opportunity for somebody else, and certainly that's the way we're looking at it. And uh, getting behind those guys that are that are coming in, whether it be to start or come onto the bench, uh, and then getting around them and, and getting them prepared the best we can. So, look, it's just a matter of going out and. Um, preparing the side that we have available and uh, hopefully that preparation will get us through. Do you think that lockdown and this whole situation is, is increased the injury risk to players? Because obviously it's a brutal tournament, the Six Nations, but it does seem that there's more than, than usual. Yeah, look, I think we've got about 21 players unavailable um, from the, the first Six Nations. So the squads that we've had, uh, 21 unavailable. So it is a high number. Um, you know, I haven't gone through the, uh, the list of injuries to look at uh, any patterns or anything like that. The medical boys will always do that in due course anyway, but I don't have that information in front of me, but it is a high number. Uh, I don't know how that compares with, with other countries, though. Just a question about the, the confidence of the whole squad. You know, a part of your job is to make sure that everyone's in, in, in the right place to play. So how hard is it to make sure that, you know, players suddenly being whizzed in are in the right place and their confidence is high? Yeah, well, look, we've got a great group of guys who accept any new player in very, very well, and uh, they've, they've got around the new players straight away. Um, you know, we send uh, information out because players can't just, we can't just pick up the phone and they come in. They've, they've got to wait 24 hours. We get up-to-date testing done for them to make sure that they, they come in a, in a negative um, from a COVID point of view. Um, but we've seen stuff out and the, and the boys have come in and um, sat down with the coaches and, and they've been across everything uh, in a very short space of time. So you know, they've done their homework, which is really, really good. And they've, they've been made to feel welcome. Just one note on, uh, on, on Willis, really. Obviously, that some of the, the criticism he had is, is nothing to do with, well, it's, let's be honest, it's to do with the, the colour of his skin. And there's a lot of stuff in the press, not just with rugby players, with footballers. I just want to know how you're supporting him with that, because that's an extra thing which... Let's be honest, it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue here. You know, well, I'm a good one to talk to him and Toby Fellatow as well, you know, who, uh, they're both time boys. So obviously, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're having a catch up and talking all things Welsh rugby. Um, but, you know, I'm from New Zealand. So, and uh, I coached Willis, had him down in the Auckland Academy years ago. So I know him very well. Look, he's a talented bloke. Um, he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's, he's, he's come through, he's had a tough upbringing. So, um, you know, he's a very level-headed uh, young man. 30 years of age, he's still a young man, in my opinion. He's got a lot of rugby ahead of him. So, uh, look, he, he brings to us an exciting skill set, and that's what we're focused on. And uh, he's going to bring something a little bit different, which we don't have in the squad. And uh, that's, that, to me, is exciting. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Uh, just to double-check, what are, what are the issues with um, George North and Josh Navidian, and how long do you expect those guys to be out for? Yeah, Josh was getting a, his neck treated, um, and George is, uh, he's had a scan on a foot. George's eye injury that he had is, is he's over that, so that was pleasing. Um, but yeah, he's got a foot injury, uh, which hopefully he'll be right for the England game, and we're sort of treating both players uh, that they will hopefully be uh, right in time for that, that fixture. Uh, a lot's happened this week, but just to backtrack slightly to some of your call-ups, why did you go for, for Willis over someone like Jamie Roberts and and why Lloyd Williams over Reese Webb? I think I've explained the, um, the Willis one. He, he tops, he's got, you know, we go through loads and loads of stats. We look at a lot of footage, obviously, um, and we look at the skill sets and the way we want to play the game. And, and Willis was at the top of the tree. Um, he actually, funny, you know, Jamie obviously has a power game. Um, and uh, Willis, funnily enough, is, is by far the best in the collision area because of his footwork. He beats defenders and gets over the game line. Um, and so that's what we're looking to utilise. Also, um, his offloading game. Um, and I think where we haven't been ruthless on the edges when we have created opportunities, he's very good in that department of the game. So, uh, you know, straightening up the attack and, um, you know, putting people into space. He creates space. So we think that's what we need at the moment. Um, we had a good long chat around Jamie. Um, 
uh, and I've um, been in touch with Jamie. Uh, Jamie's um, contacted me and I've contacted him back. We've had a discussion. He knows exactly where he sits um, uh, if, we, uh, if we need his services. So um, that's been done in due course. The halfback one, um, I think Reese talked about not wanting to be a number three. Um, and uh, Lloyd is, is a perfect number three for us. Just finally for myself, um, when you have the injuries that you've had in, in training and things like that this week, does it cause you to reflect on the way that the team is preparing for matches? Because you know, I know you've got to get the guys up to speed physically because it's a collision sport, but do you have to look and reflect on that at times? Um, we look at things, with certain injuries, we look at surfaces. So we make sure that we're, we're not training on multiple surfaces. Uh, at the moment, you know, we're, we're making a decision on uh, where we're going to train now because uh, the pitch is, is frozen in parts. So, you know, there's hardness of, of pitches, softness of pitches come into it um, with soft tissue injuries. So we're always looking at those things. Um, and uh, we, we get a lot of information on, um, on, on that prior to training sessions. We make, uh, hopefully make good decisions there. Um, look, you know, injuries happen in games. It's as simple as that. Um, you get a, an ACL injury like Dan Lydiot's. You know, there's no rhyme or reason for that. Um, they can go in contact. They can go changing direction. Uh, some of them are quite inoc innocuous, um, as his was. But um, look, no one likes injuries, and we do everything we can to to make sure that we uh, hopefully preventing injuries from happening. Thanks, Will. Thank you.